for the last 30 years, people who don't know the first thing about Photoshop have imagined it to be some kind of magical software that can invent photographic imagery out of whole cloth. So perhaps it's only fitting that now it can. So I'll start things off with a very common example, which is an interloper, a photo bomber. I've got this guy in the shot. I don't want him in the shot. And so I'm going to remove him using Jenner to fill. Now Jenner to fill is very forgiving. And so I'll just go ahead and marquee this guy using the rectangular marquee tool. Nothing special. Can move it around using the space bar on the fly right there. And once I've got the guy selected here inside the contextual taskbar, I'll go ahead and click Jenner to fill. I'm not going to enter a prompt. I'll just click the word generate and let things do, do, do let Photoshop do its thing. And by that, I mean that it's communicating with Firefly. So you do need to have an active internet connection. And then you, you will see that your a taskbar is in your face. It's in the way. I, I do want to. I do want to show you something. It does hop around in order to essentially try to kind of move into your space, but also move out of it. You never know what it's going to do. If you get it to a spot you like it, where you want it to be, that is, then you can click on the triple dot right here. You can choose, of course, hide bar to get rid of it, or you can choose pin bar position, and then it'll stay in place. But I'm going to let it wander just for the sake of demonstration. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see what Photoshop has come up with. Done a, a fantastic job of getting rid of that guy. And I have, of course, uh, three, as things stand right now, three different variations to choose from. Were I working in Firefly, I would have four. I, I'm not sure why they decided three. It might have something to do with the width of the properties panel right here, which I do have up on screen. You, if not, you can go to the window menu and choose properties. Now, if you want to get rid of some stuff like these grasses right here, then you, you're probably better off using the remove tool, which is this guy right here. So it's got some sparkles. Just like generative, just like that generate button down here, it's got sparkles. It's a different kind of, it's different kind of technology, but it's a pattern recognition function. And uh, notice that I can't paint because this is a generative fill layer. I can't paint on it. I could paint directly on a background. I'd be a fool to do so because that would be a permanent destructive, so-called destructive modification. So I'll create a new layer actually in front of the stack here by pressing control shift n command shift n on the mac and i'll call this guy remove and uh, i'll even go ahead and spell it correctly and i'll click ok and notice up here in the options bar sample all layers you got to have that turned on because you're working on a blank layer after all and you want to sample to it and, and then i like to turn off or remove after each stroke because otherwise i'll increase the size of my cursor by pressing the right bracket key otherwise as soon as you get done painting you're going to remove like so and it, it just sits there and goes away and if you don't like what you see then you have to undo and try to repaint by the way essentially uh so it's there there, there are some limitations it'd be nice with this tool i like this tool a lot but it's not perfect it'd be nice if you could regenerate after you get done painting a brush stroke you don't like what you see you click you know try again something like that anyway Good idea, Adobe. Yeah, it is. So do it. You know, here's another example. And not only do we have a guy in a shot, in a loper. I mean, it's not his fault. He's He's got his own photographs going. But I'm shooting with an iPhone and, and somehow I got my finger in a shot. Because I'm a doofus. Anyway, so here's what you want to do. You can use the remove tool. You could try that out if you want to. You're probably going to have better luck by going with the lasso tool. Now, because this guy's out of focus, my finger is the guy I'm talking about. Because it's out of focus, because, you know, it's out of the focal range, well, well outside of it, you want to select well outside the finger. So you don't want to select in that sort of mid-range of focus right there. Then click Jenner to fill. Don't enter a prompt. Just click generate. And that way, one of the benefits here is that Photoshop vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, compared with other technologies out there, the way things stand right now, Photoshop is able to see the selection, accommodate the selection, and basically evaluate the stuff inside the selection, but also around the edge, the edges of the selection outline. Now that looks hideous. So I'll try a different variation and that looks better. And I don't want to... 
you know, basically spend all day evaluating whether this looks good or not. If you don't like it, you can click generate and try again. It doesn't look great, but it's going to work well enough for now. Now, let's say I want to get rid of this guy. Let's say I really want to get rid of everything. I want to get rid of the shadow that's being cast by a van that's stirring us about here. And I'll select, you know, well outside of the guy just to make sure we have as much selected as possible including his shadow, then I'll go over here to complete the selection. If you do that, click generative fill, don't enter a prompt, click generate. For these kind of purposes, typically you don't need to enter a prompt. By the way, you can, but what would it be? Very steep hill. This is a very steep road, by the way, 19 degrees. We measured it. That's pretty steep. It's like the streets of San Francisco, except there are no flat spots. They just keep going up and up and up. And, you know, but basically, here's the part that you don't care about that. This is what you care about. Very low resolution, as you can see here. And some of that has to do, well, first of all, the Firefly is only capable of generating one megapixel, two megapixel imagery. Doesn't go much beyond that. It, whereas this image is, let's see, why don't we? I, I'm just bringing up the canvas size command for a moment. So we can see it's about 4,000 by 2,600 pixels. So what, that's about 10 and a half megapixels, I think, if I were to do the math. If I'm not doing the math, then, well, you do the math and, and tell me how wrong I am. It's something like that, though. And so I'll cancel out something in the 10 megapixel range. That's way higher. So we're going to have very low resolution imagery that Photoshop is is giving us back vis-a-vis -vis generative fill. So, and, and that, that that's something to bear in mind. This, you know, no matter which of the variations I apply, they're going to be low res. Well, so what do you do about that? Well, here's a way to kind of accommodate. Let's, let's do it a piece at a time. So I'll just grab the shadow for starters, the shadows that's being cast by the guy. Click generate to fill. Click generate again. Let it do its thing. Let Photoshop talk to Firefly. It's going to take a moment or two as we're seeing. But right about here, the way things stand now, I'll put my cursor there. It's a predictive tool as to when the the taskbar is going to go away. It's actually before that. So it doesn't really do the entire progress bar. But you can see that's a better match resolution-wise. It's not great, but see, I'm doing less at a time. So if you're trying to replace a big, huge area, then Photoshop has to upsample the information that it gets from Firefly. If you're doing a smaller area, it doesn't have to, so you're going to get a better resolution mix uh, match. That is, yes, that's a hell of a trick. If nothing, I hope you got that, by the way, before you decided to skip the rest of the video, because that is a very useful trick. Here's another one. I'm going to grab the object selection tool. Real quick, if you like what I've been showing you, or even if you're mildly appalled, I have one more exhaustive example. I captured this turtle, and I worked really hard at it, swimming about 50 feet underwater, but it's no good. Not that is until I utterly and completely transformed it inside Photoshop. For the complete story, check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to some more flawless photography. And I'm just going to marquee our fellow right here. And you can use the space bar once again to make sure you got the entire thing, the entire person inside the marquee. And I'll release as soon as I've got him all the way inside. You can see that I set, by the way, up here, I set the color to magenta. I mean, is that magenta? No, it's not. It's chartreuse. I lost my eyeballs for a second. My mind is the part that I lost. All right, so now I could uh, go ahead and generate. I actually do have a little bit of a problem. Switch to the lasso tool for a second. Notice his knuckle didn't get selected. So you may have that kind of stuff. Just shift, drag around. Shift, drag around this little detail to add it. I would also recommend expanding because otherwise you're going to have a problem. If you, if you try to go with a really precise selection like that, again, generative fill is seeing the pixels around the selection outline. It's going to include that information inside the selection. I could show you what that looks like. Actually, I will. I'll just show you really quick because it should not look very good. My prediction here as we wait for the progress bar is that we're going to see some flesh kind of come out around at least some flesh colors that are going to come out around ah was i right or not look at that see that's the problem with a precise selection when you're working with generative fill precision is not your friend undo that in other words and then 
click on this guy in the jumpy around contextual taskbar and choose expand selection. And I'm going to go with 20 pixels. You could go with more or less. Really, it's up to you. But anyway, notice that I'm flaring that out a little bit. And that way, it, it, generative fill is not really going to see the flesh this time around. It's that it, because that's inside the selection. So it's really looking at the pixels that are around the selection outline, which is kind of the genius of this feature. Even though Firefly, so many people have, have, have commented on this, even though Firefly is inherently not producing the quality of imagery that Midjourney is. Midjourney doesn't have an entire Photoshop wrapped around it. It's not seeing around the selection edges, all that jazz. It's also it, it also has its resolution difficulties, by the way, or limitations that is. And so you can see that now that I'm working with a much larger selection outline, that I have lower resolution results compared with this shadow stuff over here. Shadow replacement that looks a lot better. This looks a lot smoogier. Anyway, you can choose, but you know, you can switch between the different variations. You that actually looks pretty good. I like that little I like that little detail where we got some gook inside the crack right there. And then you could replace the the shadow that's being cast by the van. You you know, I could do that. You could do that. You can't really do that cuz you don't have this image, but you know what I'm talking about. Oh, it just get so much better. So those are the kinds of things, the run of the mill things that you have inside of a photograph that you might want to correct. But then of course, when I was shooting these photographs, I'm sitting there thinking, what, 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 how, how much could I just completely blow off even trying to come up with a decent composition? For example, let's say I want to get this cool pool. It's in St. It's, it's Martin, this infinity pool thing. But I'll just, you know, I'll include the umbrella in the shot just because I'm so lazy. I can't walk five steps over to the right. But fine, go for it. In which case, I'll just go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And I will I'll press the Alt key. Keep, keep it down too, the option key and the Mac. So keep that key down. That way you can draw a polygonal lasso like so. So just draw that guy. And then I'll get myself the old rectangular marquee tool. And I'll shift draw a drag that is around the pole right there to add it. And actually I'll go back to the lasso tool. And I will, you know this trick, you know you can shift drag in order to add to a selection outline like so. But do you know, Midway in, release the shift key because you've already given that instruction. You've already told Photoshop you want to add to the selection. Now press and hold the Alt key, mid-drag. We're in the middle of the drag. Press and hold the Alt or Option key. And now start clicking around. So now you go to the polygonal function that you're using to add to the selection outline. Try it out on your own, friends, and you'll uh, be so cheerful and happy. All right, I'm just going to add a little more to the selection. Click Gener to fill. Click generate again, no prompts this time around in order to just eliminate the umbrella from the shot. And it, this is this is really, I think, a fairly uh, modern miracle of, of this technology is that even if you're a hopelessly bad photographer <laughs> or just sloppy, just, just out of, just like super duper sloppy, there's some people I could remove in the background as well, but I have uh, various options to choose from. Got rid of an entire <laughs> foreground element, a very n n large foreground element as well. It will, will we have some resolution matching problems? We will. That should be kind of pretty obvious. And so, yeah, you can see right there that the palm tree uh, goes kind of south right there. That, uh, that, that uh, I'll, I'll zoom in just a little more so you can see it. And so notice nice crisp <laughs> palm fronds, whatever they're called. And here, very uh, pixelated because uh, once again... Uh, we're, we're, we're getting low resolution results that are getting upsampled. This image is even higher resolution, by the way, it's 6,000 by, uh, almost 4,000. So what is that? Like 24 megapixels. So that's, that's a lot more than one or two that you're getting from, uh, Firefly. So, you know, this will improve over time, but that's the way it is right now. This I think is, is a real gem. So this, you know, it's not even a, it's not even something, I don't even know why I shot it. Probably 
because I thought it looked pretty pretty rotten. And so it's just a parking lot. But what I thought, well, you know that. You can see what it is. I'll just kind of drag across the ocean there. And then I'm going to drag kind of into this building and around here. I think this is what I came up with. And I'll, and I'll drag down here and around these cars and over like so and you know that's this is a terrible selection outline but it just it just to give you an idea for how uh, just completely uh wacky you can go with this stuff click generative fill this time i'll give it a prompt i'll say seaside park with lush trees and foliage because otherwise let's let's not give it a prompt for a second i'll click generate just to uh see what Photoshop comes up with by itself. And in this case, it is going to look at the edges. It kind of does look into the content. It's going to see these trees. Anyway, this 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 foliage down here as well as kind of the parking lot junk. Oh, what a lie. What a lie. This is the first time I've ever seen it do that. It just decided to extend the beat. Okay, that's not a good detail right there. That's fine. But check it out. Oh, my gosh. It just, like, uh, eliminated the parking lot. I'm very, okay, That this is kind of more what I thought it would come up with. It It's done other stuff in the past, but this, I think, is fairly awe-inspiring. But, again, I'll, I'll just try. I, I should get this pole out of the way there. I'll go ahead and select it and into the ocean, and I might have selected too far into this building. Down here, cars. This building thing over here, up and around, grab those trees. This time I am going to add my prompt just because I came up with the seaside park with lush trees and foliage. And I don't know about you, but I think it's a good idea to actually enter this stuff in notepad or text edit or something, something out there so that has a spell checker so that you can at least make sure because there's no spell checking. Where, where Photoshop is concerned, where this feature is concerned. And so if you do spell things wrong, sometimes it works actually, other times not so well. Look at this, look at this. I just decided to, yeah, I'm just doing an urban cleanup project. Don't you, don't you know? Isn't it looking swell? I, I think I still like the one without the prop the best. This guy right here. And then, you know, you could select the other details and, and mess around with them. Or you could go back uh, to the remove tool. And I want to mention something about this guy. Here's the thing. So remove after each stroke. Turn it off, please. And then create a new layer, of course. Call it remove. And then I've got sample all layers turned on. Very important. And that way I can paint. And then if that's not enough, I can paint some more. Now, Adobe, uh, a few things you could do. That, like great tool. Yes. Wonderful. Half like it third imp implemented tool. You know, you can add by painting some more, but you can't paint away. I don't know why that is. You can't ask it to regenerate after you generate something after you, you know, give it a try here. You can't say try again. And uh, you can't change the overlay color right now from magenta. So, you know, whatever. Anyway, this obvious stuff, it seems to me, but it is there. I just want you to remember that so i think it's not perfect but I, i'd say that's a pretty big modification right there here's something i photographed these fish on the wall in the st martin airport for 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 what that's worth now what you might figure right so these wood blocks right here i don't want them but also there's some seams so i'll just go ahead and make you know a very kind of careful selection around this region and around this region as well. Bearing in mind, of course, that the bigger your selections, the lower resolution your results are going to be, or at least they're going to be not, the resolution isn't going to be a match. And so now I'll just click generate in order to uh, apply generative fill. No prompt, of course, you may have noticed that. And uh, we are communicating with uh, Firefly in the ether right there vis-a-vis -vis the old live internet connection and what 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 what's what did I do wrong well that's going to be great if you just want to fill in with white actually that worked really good but I don't want these fish gaps that's the problem and now I'm switching between the variations and they look, <laughs> they look all the same actually they're identical sometimes they come up with little fish so just imagine with me won't you that there's some little fish that it had it can only work inside the selection is my point you can't like say well don't, don't you want to add more fish out in this region so 
Your bigger, more general selection outlines are your friends. So I'm just going to like do a big selection outline. Like, so generative fill, click generate. And this way, because, because I don't want to have a big resolution mit, mit, mismatch, that is, I am trying to work in sections as opposed to try to do a lot of work all at once. So better. And look, isn't that great? It's like, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not like this hand painted fish and this mutant fish right there. So it's not like, you know, a firefly in this case, you know, when Photoshop's talking to it, it uh, Photoshop didn't say, I got some fish for you. And Firefly says, yeah, I'm throwing, throwing some fish back at you because it doesn't know these are fish. It doesn't have that. It just knows pixel patterns. And so now I'll just do another big selection like so and then click generative fill. When I say big selection, again, I'm not really arguing in favor of big, massive selections. I'm arguing in favor of uh, general selection outlines. And, you know, it comes up with that. It fills in the fishy gap, as we're seeing right here. And so just for fun, I'll press Shift F in order to switch to the full screen mode right here and uh, get rid of that little bit of uh, paneling that's going on over there on the right-hand side. And notice now, uh, I zoomed in, and, and you can probably see if you look very closely that we, we're not matching the um, um, resolution exactly, but we're, we're zoomed out a little bit here, so it looks pretty darn good. And of course, you know, we got some mutant fish, but yeah, you know, none of these fish are, are are particularly what I would call highly representative of actual life forms. So you know, it looks uh, pretty cool, and that is how you can take your limited photography skills, or just you know, just playing like you're not even trying with that with that uh, uh, umbrella example, and you can fill in. A brand new generative detail using generative fill here inside Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget about my magical sea turtle at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.